Hey everybody, this is Christian Buckley doing another MVP Buzz Chat, and I'm talking today with Teresa. Hello. Hey, Christian, how are you? I'm doing well. And for folks that don't know you, brand new MVP, tell us who you are, where you are, and what you do. All right. My name is Teresa Cyrus, and I live in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. The MVP is in Apps and Services. I develop a lot of training content for Microsoft Services. So all the office applications, Word, PowerPoint, um, Teams, and the new outlook is what I'm really focusing on. So I offer training to private and um, group individuals. So that's what I do. Well, something that I like, to, it's kind of a, uh, uh, not so, so strong of a brag, but uh, so Sharon Weaver and I run this monthly cohort of people that are interested in finding out more about the MVP and RD programs. And we mentor them through that process. And Teresa joined her very first cohort call <laughs> and that same day received her MVP. <laughs> exactly. I, I remember asking the question. I remember saying, I don't know if my videos are going to be enough, you know, to get this award. And while we were on the call, I must was getting the emails. And then I joined the women's and teams call and, um, and got the email. So that was that was pretty interesting that I was on that call and received it that day. So. Well, here's a see see the power of just being associated <laughs> with that cohort, being involved for the, anybody that's interested. Reach out to me. Exactly. <laughs> We're that good. Exactly. <laughs> you you answered all my um, all my questions, so that was good. <laughs> yeah. So what is the the answer to that question? Like now that you're going to be asked, and I'm sure you've already heard as a brand new MVP, some people in your network that have reached out, like, how'd you do it? What was the process of becoming that? So what is the answer to what's the right volume of, of community contributions? I would say just do what you love doing. Just keep, you know, for me, I push out videos like twice a week. And what's interesting, I wasn't, my original strategy was not focused around YouTube. YouTube was just the holding place for my videos. And then January, when I made that switch and say, I need to focus on YouTube, right? But I just continue to go out on tech community. I really enjoy helping end users with their issues. And um, again, thinking of knowing that Microsoft is going towards this new outlook, getting people ready, hopefully they, you know, do that user adoption and start, you know, using it early. That was what I did. I just want to just continue to help end users simplify their workday every day. You know, that's, that's my, like my tagline, simplify your workday every day. So yeah. it's just really just continue to just do what you love. It's your passion. And that's what I like yeah. doing. It's helping, helping people. I, I know people don't like that answer that it's, it really is a black box to all of us, like how Microsoft selects the MVPs. It's a, and that's why I, I completely agree. You just need to do what you do. Um, I, I do the things that I do, regardless of the MVP title. It's just part of my persona. It's, it's, it's my passion. It's my hobby is content generation, uh, you know, uh, writing about sharing what I'm learning and my journey and my experience. That's what you have to do. Yeah. And I look at it like I didn't come into this saying I want to be MVP. That was never that was not part of my goal. It wasn't that it was just starting to push information out. And then then, you know, I met Dan and he started mentioning the MVP. And the other thing is that I didn't realize, you know, I was so focused on the end users, you know, as my audience that I forgot about IT folks as well, right? You have to have that balance of IT. And I make sure on my LinkedIn, because I'm really heavy on LinkedIn, is I don't want to be too IT heavy with followers and I don't want to be too admin assistants and business users, right? I want mm -hmm. that balance between the both because, you know, as IT professionals, we are so end users as well, right? Yep. And, and I do, I want to, 
again, a shout out to Dan Ray, who does a tremendous uh, amount for as an MVP uh, for the community, helping mentor and helping identify new MVPs. So I, I'd say that if you're if you're one, you're part of our monthly cohort, and you know to Dan Ray, then like you're almost a shoe in. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He, um, once I got up under his wing, what he didn't realize is that, um, I was going to follow <laughs> just yeah. the way he posts, you know, learning from him, um, way he posts information out on LinkedIn, you know, way he, um, he, he has on this as a people developer. Right. And, um, and just here recently, I starting to have a lot of people reaching out to me so I can see, me some of the things that I'm learning from him that I will be passing off to others because just within you know since the first of the month I have quite a bit of people who have reached out to me you know asking those type questions and the main thing is when we were at Clapcom the whole idea was to have a perspective from an MV perspective and an expiring MVP you know perspective and um you know, just wanted to make sure, just continue to do what you love to do. Don't chase it. Yeah. Don't don't chase it. And I, I think the other thing is, um, too, is make sure that it's not like something you just, you know, in six months. Oh, in six months, I want to do this. Yeah. You know, you got to think about your contribution contribution for a year. And for me, I've been doing this for two and a half years. Yeah. Right? That was about, so for me, the same time, I, I left Microsoft in mid 2009 and earned mine in January, 2012. So it was about two and a half years. Is that right? Yeah. About two and a half years. I can do math. I can, we can do hard things. <laughs> uh, and, but it was, it, but it's the same thing. It's uh, uh, what I, what I talk about, and you've heard me talk about it in that the cohort call as well is. You know, it's, it's about developing those healthy habits, you know, find things that you like, that you enjoy. Um, and, and it could be a combination of creating YouTube videos, mm -hmm. video shorts, um, blogging. I do a lot of blogging. I, I love organizing AMAs. So mm -hmm. a lot of what I like doing is not even me answering the, the technical questions, but gathering the people answering the, the you know, identifying the questions, mm -hmm. answering those questions, and then doing the post-production, putting together the video and the blog post mm -hmm. around that. And so I, I look at a lot of what I do, even this series and my mm -hmm. podcast, I'm highlighting the work of others. It's not even things that I'm necessarily, I'm out there doing at the, the forefront. I, I, I prefer raising up others and showcasing their great work and talking to them about that. That's what that's what my passion's about. And one of the things is um, with my videos, I'm starting to have people to reach out to me and say, hey, I, I like your style of delivery. You know, can you give me some pointers, right? You know, what equipment do you use? Because I remember, mm. you know, that I was them two years ago. I knew nothing, you know, about production setup, right? The lighting, the audio, you know, all that's in place. So if you go back and look at some of my earlier videos, they were terrible, but I stayed at it, right? And so, you know, having people to reach out and asking those questions and sharing that information. So hopefully that their experience is a little bit easier than mine. Um, I think the, the one that used to get me is that I have a great video, I'm not gonna say it was perfect, a great video and to find that the audio was not on. Yeah, uh, well, there... It, you know, it's, it's, it's funny when I started, um, I, I was just telling somebody about this like last week. So I started, uh, I did a, a series of videos that are all still out on YouTube that I actually did about 200 of them. And I mm -hmm. think it's that series. Not, I think, I know it was that series that pushed me over the edge. It got me into the MVP program, but I went around and some viewers might remember this. I did a series called the one thing. And as I was traveling and speaking at conferences around the world, and I was blessed to work for a company, I was the chief evangelist. And so they paid for me to go to these events. I still had to submit and get accepted to speak. Um, but I was speaking at these events around the world. Um, you know, I, I 
keynoted on five continents. I mean, it's just, I've had a lot of experience doing that. And I would capture these little short videos where just for, could be a minute long, could be four minutes long, where I would ask people, hey, what's the one thing people need to know about it, it, back then it was SharePoint 2010. Mm -hmm. And I would just record their, their answers. And then I would go back and I would do the post-production around that. Now that was on like a little Kodak flip mm -hmm. camera thing, mm -hmm. this tiny little device. Mm -hmm. And so it was, you know, really not great quality video, but I realized that if I got away from the noise, cause it would pick up all the ambient noise. If we got to a quiet place and that I took the time to adjust the lighting to make sure we're in a good natural light spot, I would find that and capture these. And some of those people are like, ah, oh, that's great quality. I'm like, I just lucked out. It was yeah. because I was aware of lighting and sound. Well, for me is like I said, um, YouTube, I remember telling my my friends saying, I don't want to be a YouTuber. That was my line two and a half years ago. In January of this year, I said, I was my my YouTube channel was flatlined, right? I only had like 72 followers, you know, after you know, two years or so or a year and a half. And I said, I gotta switch, I gotta change. And once I start changing my thumbnails, start thinking about the content, start thinking about the lighting, everything. I have 831 followers just within that nine, 10 months that I made the change. The first January, I changed all of my thumbnails. You know, I started to think about the SEO. So when I start to make that change, I saw a difference in, um, you know, the followership in, in my, um, in my, with my YouTube channel. So mm -hmm. that was really interesting that you do have to pay attention to that. And it made a huge difference. I think the other thing that I do differently or did slightly differently, and I'll use the wiki page retirement as an example. A lot of people was pushing information out saying it's being retired and gave them the details. And then they left it alone. I stayed with the end users, right? I kept giving them updates and answering their questions. So I found that if I found an issue that the end users were having and answering that, that's what did great. Yeah. Because I was always thinking, I want to be proactive. I want them to be proactive to learn this new feature. No, it's really addressing, you know, the issues that they're having. Those are the videos that did well. That, you know, left, that, navi that left navigation been moved from, you know, the bottom to the left yeah. <laughs> is my top video. <laughs> No, there, you know, it, there's something to be said about, I mean, this is a, as a marketing guy, um, you know, finding that, that issue and becoming the subject matter expert on that issue. A lot of people think it's like, is there really that kind of opportunity? It's like, are you kidding me Absolutely. now? Especially that you have this rapid expansion, the, the universe is expanding in the Microsoft world because, you know, every time Microsoft creates a new feature for something, they're slapping a logo on it now. And it's this new, you know, skew, this new sub offering of as part of like, just look at Viva as an example, what's happening across, you know, Entra and security uh, at you know, any of these areas. Like I was interviewing uh, an MVP who's talked about wanting to become uh, one of the top experts in Microsoft syntax. Mm. And I'm like, there's a massive opportunity for more content around that and experiences and be the voice of that. Um, go and do it. Good friend of mine, uh, Hans Brender, who's, who became, you know, he, he tagged himself Mr. OneDrive mm. and, but it's stuck. Yeah. And now he's one of the, you know, people like they have questions about OneDrive and they'll reach out to Hans for help with that. So, so when I started this, because I can't, my background was SharePoint, right? Mm -hmm. And when I started this, my husband just knew I was going to go down that path. And I said, no, um, I know that 2016 and 2019 is going to be retired in 2025. And when Microsoft started making that shift from, you know, the classic Outlook who, you know, I'm one of those folks who's been using the classic Outlook, you know, desktop um, um, version forever, you know, ever since they wrote it out, when they make that change, people are going to struggle yep. with that change. And I said, I'm going to be ready for them. 
I am going to be ready when Microsoft is ready to start to, you know, because this was two years ago. I didn't know what this new outlook was going to look like. I didn't know when they were going to start pushing it, but I wanted to be ready for that. So when they start to push these features out, end users have a place to go. And, and it's perfect timing because I, now I'm over my um, learning curve with all my equipment and lighting and all of that. So it's perfect timing that I'm in the place that I'm in now that Microsoft is ready to, you know, slowly, gradually, you know, push these features out, right? And, um, and, and that was my mindset because my, my husband thought that I was really going to go back down the road for um, SharePoint because this is what I do all day. Yeah. I don't, I don't have a daytime job. This is my daytime job, right? Well, it, it, look, I, I, so I started as a SharePoint MVP. That was, that's my world as well. It, it, it's funny. I was in the IBM world uh, and I've shared this a, a lot. People have heard me say this, but uh, you know, my back in 2005, yeah. um, I had, so I, I officially saw SharePoint. I visited Microsoft campus. I was invited up by people on the product team in 2004 they showed me what they were working on, which was the early stages of what would become the 2007 version. Mm -hmm. And I told them that their product was garbage. Mm. <laughs> okay. A year later. That, that was pretty blunt. <laughs> in, in 2005. Well, I worked with other collaboration technology that was much more expensive, like million dollar entry point kind of software, but was beautiful product. And what we were using back in 2001, 2002, um, was on par with what is SharePoint 2010, you know, so it was much far advanced, but very expensive. But that, anyway, um, that's, you know, what, it, that's where I started off with SharePoint 2010. I remember which our is a company, great platform. Our, right. our, our company had wrote the company I worked for had wrote it out and we knew nothing about SharePoint. And so they had their senior analysts, you know, migrating, you know, to SharePoint 2010. And I went to them and said, let me, let me train them. We, we don't know what we're doing, you know, and they would say things like, oh, it's just like Outlook. No, it's not, you know, it's mm -hmm. not just like Outlook and PowerPoint, you know, and I said, let me train them, let the senior analysts migrate them and I'll come behind them and train, you know, the basic contributor users. And then I created um, a training program for the site owners and then power users. So that's how I started off in, in SharePoint and I was learning it and teaching it as I go. <laughs> yeah, that's a great way to do that. But it's, I, so what I, what I realized was like, I, I worked in, so in the IBM world um, prior to the Microsoft community, of course I've used, always been a Microsoft stack guy, um, did graphic design on Apple devices, but um, was really a PC guy um, since the you know early 90s. Um, but having worked in the, I worked with Rational Software, I don't know if you're familiar with Rational, they got acquired by IBM. But what was fantastic, it was a really rich, dynamic community around that. IBM bought that, it killed the community. And so one of the things I recognized in 2005, so it's funny, I had a client that was just like, you got to take a look at the SharePoint. And that it was the community side of it in this that was already growing and already vibrant. And, and I just, I recognized how similar that was to what I experienced with rational software. And so that kind of convinced me to take a look and, you know, got help in a number of different areas very quickly. Um, early on, some MVPs um, got involved. Uh, and uh, so that's something that, you know, Microsoft has always been known for its partner community, but it, you hear executives say this, Jeff Teeper says this all the time, like we have the best community in tech mm -hmm. and it really is that is why there's so much opportunity. That's why we're helping each other to learn. And you, you've got to think going back to where you started, it's uh, not, maybe not quite mirroring other experts that are out there, but but take a look at those that have been successful. What are they doing? How do they do those things and build those into your healthy habits? Um, I want to, I want to go back to when you were saying about talking about SharePoint, the other reason why I didn't go down the road to SharePoint, knowing that I knew this was going to be my day job. 
you ha- you actually have to be working with end users and and experience the the issues that they're having. Yeah. And you know, not having that daily interaction with clients and helping them with real life issues and them dreaming up, hey, I want to do this. Can I? How can I get this done? And I knew that I wouldn't be able to service that community, you know, um, at, at a 10 rating because not having that interaction with them every day. Like I said, they would dream up wanting to do you know, can I do this? And that's where that creativity come from and making yeah. the, not making the system, but getting the system to work with you to produce what they want. I mean, that was the exciting part for me around SharePoint. Well, that's why you I, have I, I the little, majority of MVPs. Yeah, that's why the majority of MVPs are mm-hmm. in consulting roles, whether they work for a consulting company or, and there are a number of MVPs that work for you know, a, a product company and, mm-hmm. uh, or, or just, or an industry as in industry, you know, you work for a bank, you know, there's work, work for an airline or whatever, and you're using the technology in your day to day, but you're, you're right. It's you, you lose something when you're not on that front line right. with users. That's right. You're exactly right. And that, and that is another reason why I went to tech community and start answering questions because it kept yeah. me connected to what the users were having issues with. And like I said, a couple of my videos that it's doing very well is because the information, um, the question that I received on tech community or Reddit, I go there yeah. and um, users have an issue and I'll address it or do a creative video for it. That's where, you know, um, that's the major impact. That's the positive impact. Yeah there when you actually helping them with an issue yep no that is that is one of the best it's it's i always joke and that's that what we like to do as it professionals right of course you know? but it's yeah. You know, there's uh, <laughs> something you have to be careful about like they've certainly have had you know videos that get thousands of views and have taken off i've done things for clients that have been you know tens of thousands of views I mean, I had a, I've got a, a, a presentation that I used to give, I did for years, I did variations of it, where I had over half a million views mm. on one presentation, um, still out there on SlideShare somewhere. Mm. Um, but that's not what it's about. I mean, sometimes it's, um, I'll, have, I'll have a video that'll be live for two weeks and there's like 30 views of that video, but then someone will reach out to me and be like, that solved the exact issue it's you know and that is so much more satisfying than seeing you know high number of views with no interactions it's that that engagement with the individuals positive or negative um comments right because i know that with the new outlook um video that when it first was rolled out there was a lot of missing features and um i had to i had to actually say to them I'm a user just like you. Don't don't, don't shoot the messenger, right? right? right. <laughs> but you know the but the fact that they were sharing their information and what I liked about with the new Outlook, the missing features that they had shared with me, I start to compile a list. So mm-hmm. now and I keep track of the missing features. So when it is rollout or there's a workaround, yep. I share that. Well, that's right. why if, if you're so, wondering about like ideas to go and write about that, that's exactly the place to start. What questions are people asking about? If you're passionate right. about a product or a, a service, like what are the questions that people have that are out there? Like if you go in and do a search on, and I wish, you know, Bing search was ef- as effective as Google search. We won't get into that really yeah, yeah. discussion, <laughs> like, yeah. but but I'll go in and do that. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll ask a question out on Google and it'll show me related searches or questions that are being asked in that topic. And, uh, it, you know, it's interesting to, to, to look at that. What are the other questions that are out there? Then, then search on those sub questions mm-hmm. and see what has somebody answered this, uh, you know? And so it's a great way to, as you're creating content to make sure, am I, robustly answering this question with the other questions because 
Not everybody may ask the question the same way, so they may not find your response. And so by building on that, it's almost having an SEO mindset um, and, and optimize your content for searchability. And again, um, I, I do it. I get these questions from tech community and from Reddit, right? So I know that there was a couple questions around um, something we're dealing with PowerPoint. And I was like, mm, if they're having this question and starting to see the number of people that view that on tech community, then I give them the response. The other thing that I do differently too is I always give them, you know, sort of screenshots. A lot of times on tech community, they're just typing the answer and I give them screenshots because I'm always thinking of the end user and their, um, you know, their um, computer skills, right? Yeah. If they, if yeah. they yeah. may not know. And so I always put screenshots with it as well, but tech community and Reddit is where I get a lot of, you know, real life questions and issues and I develop content around that. Well, we'll have to, I'll have to include your uh, profile link to both of those locations. I, I sometimes do when, when uh, MVPs at an interview are involved in tech, uh, tech community and I'll put their tech community profile, but uh, this is kind of my final question. I always wrap on, but Teresa, for folks that want to reach out to you or connect with you, where are you most active in social besides tech community and, uh, and so, others? like, where can people find you? LinkedIn, YouTube, and tech community. So those are the three that I'm really, um, you know, visible on. And you see in my name, tra um, Track Creation 4E. So that's the number 4E. Track Creation is where we explore, experiment, and execute effectively. So that's my tagline. <laughs> Excellent. Well, Teresa, really appreciate your time. Great to talk to you again. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Wow.